Hi there, and welcome to Projects Distilled, where we talk about all things project management. I am so glad that you're here. Today, we are going to do a day in the life of a project manager, but with a twist. We are going to do a day in the life of a project manager with the help of the best artificial intelligence engine available currently. We're going to see what GPT-4 can do for us on a daily basis. We've looked at it in other videos, but here we're going to take a list of the things that a project manager does in a, in a typical day, and we're going to see what this chat engine can do for us to help improve and speed up and improve the quality of the work that we do. I don't believe that project managers are in danger of being replaced by artificial intelligence anytime soon. However, I do believe that there are going to be more expectations on project managers to do things faster, better, because there's going to be artificial intelligence available to us where we might have done two or three projects at a time. Maybe we have to do more. Maybe we have to do bigger projects with less help. I don't know what the future is going to hold exactly, but I know that these tools are going to enable us to do more faster. So let's take a look at what we're going to do today. So I created a typical task list for a project manager. You can see it's got nine items on it. And these are typical of what a project manager would have to, to do in a day. They're all over the place. That's one of the things that I love about project management is that you never know what your day is going to hold. You've got to put on your strategic hat and your tactical hat all within you know a few minutes. And it's, it's kind of an exciting life to live. I've sorted the list with a zero, one, two type of priority. Zero meaning it has to be done, cannot not happen. Ones are high priority, really need to happen. Twos are important, but can come later. And in a typical day, I would expect that I could probably finish maybe three, four, five of these at a time. We're gonna see if with the help of GPT-4, we can finish them all. So let's dive in to task number one. For this example today, we're gonna to use the same project that we've used in other videos. It's a migration from Microsoft Office platform to Google Workspace platform. In previous videos, we've fleshed out some of the tasks, added risks, things like that. With all of these chat engines, you have to give the chat engine some context. So we're gonna use that project to set some context. It's really just about a list of, of 15 to 20 tasks that we'd previously developed for it. And with that baseline, I believe that GPT-4 is gonna be able to help us with a lot of our tasks. For task number one, I've set up a problem that has just occurred apparently overnight, and it's something that we need to resolve right away. There was some failed QA testing that took place on an integration between the Microsoft suite and the Google suite. It doesn't look like the Google suite can do things the same way that end users are expecting it to do. We've got to get to the bottom of that. I'm going to ask GPT-4 to help me to troubleshoot the problem uh, and give that information to the team to help troubleshoot. So let's see what it says. It gave us a really extensive list, a good solid list of things that we can try to troubleshoot. Now, it's not troubleshooting the exact technical problem. We would have to give it additional details about that technical problem, and then maybe it could help. It is good at writing code, but for this exercise, I was just looking for, hey, what can I help instruct the team to do to uh, overcome the challenge that we're seeing? And it gave us a lot of good advice. It said to check for specific errors, consult vendor support, that's good. We also, in this scenario, are actually using a consultant uh, so we can put some pressure on them to help us to resolve it. Review logs, trace errors, these are all good standard troubleshooting techniques. So it gave us a good starting place for this. So now that we have some basic troubleshooting techniques identified, I need to write a note to the team explaining to them what the problem is, what we're gonna do about it, uh, and try to keep the team rallied uh, to be successful to overcome this. So let's take a look at what GPT-4 generated for us. So you can see the natural language instincts with this are strong. I hope this message finds you well. That's a nice way to start. Don't, isn't always necessary. It's very easy to change the tone and you'll see that I will change the tone on some future communications. So you can see how that looks, but you can see it took that original list, that troubleshooting list and just turned it into kind of an action item for us. Now it turned it into a more of a, hey, this is what we're doing. 
And that's the audience that should be doing those things. So I would just need to go in and make a few tweaks on the actual email before I send it to say, these are the things that we need to try to get over the challenge. And then we have an email. But look how quickly that generated an email. Do you know how long that would take me to tap out that type of a message? A lot longer than it took ChatGPT. So I think what we've done is we've shifted a lot of the work from creating the message to editing and refining the message, which also takes time, but less time than having to do all of those things together. Let's take a look at the second. So the second item presupposes that we have a steering committee meeting set up. And as the project manager, we've got to get prepared for it. So here I have asked it to create an agenda as well as some slides. Now, unfortunately at this point, GPT-4 cannot create slides, the actual visuals of the slides. However, it gives us suggestions for it. I believe that Microsoft is working on integrations with all of its Office suite. So at some point, GPT-4 will be able to go in and actually generate content. That's going to be amazing. For now, I'm just happy for the suggestions and then I can go in and create those slides. So let's see how it does. So it gave us a multi-point agenda covering all of the most important things. There are probably a few tweaks that I would make to it, but in general, this is a solid agenda. Something that certainly you could cut and paste or after you've refined it, cut and paste and put it into the calendar invite so that people can see what the meeting is going to cover. As for the slides, it gives us a really solid outline of the slides that we should create. So it's got a milestone slide, it's got budget slides, it's got all of the things that you would expect to be in a standard steering committee agenda. And steering committee could also be a stakeholder meeting, whatever you choose to call them. So we've got an outline, didn't create the slides, but now at least I have a, a backbone, a format that I can start to work with as I generate the slides myself. Now, because GPT-4 is great at remembering what comes before, I'm going to ask it to make some changes to slide eight. Slide eight was the risk slide. And I've identified that we have a new risk. It's a budget risk. We've determined that we're going to go over the budget by $75,000 for licensing for Google. So we've just experienced a, uh, a risk. It is it has come to fruition. So we need to report on that. So I'm going to ask it to add some content. So I'm going to ask it to create a table of risk that can be included in the slideshow. So here it is actually going to be generating some content for my slides. Let's see how it does. Now, actually, I didn't tell it about the $75,000 budget problem in that particular prompt. I'm going to tell it now about the $75,000 and let's see how it modifies the table to make that adjustment. And you can see that it's regenerating the table from start. But when it gets to the risk of budget overruns, it changes the status to high, high because we've already met that risk. It's, it's materialized. And that's something that stakeholders would expect to see is that if you've actually... Uh, met one of those risks, they want to see that it's in your risk table and identified as something that, that has occurred. So before moving on, let's stop and take a look at our to-do list and see how we're doing against it. So you can see that we've accomplished the first item, which is to respond to the team about the QA failure. We've actually finished the second item as well, which is create an agenda and a slide deck for the steering committee. And this is assuming that I've gone and built the slides based on what, uh, what the chat bot has said that I should. And we've created a risk table and updated it to reflect a risk that has just materialized. So we're done with items one, two, and three. That's pretty good. Obviously there's a lot of side time, the editing and the refining that you're not seeing, but it is helping speed us up as project managers. So let's look at number four. We need to ask the executive sponsor and the CFO for additional funds to cover that budget problem that we identified. So I'm gonna ask GPT-4 to generate a letter for me. Let's take a look at how it does. Again, that natural language, I hope that this email finds you well. It clearly lays out what the problem is that we had an unexpected budget overrun of $75,000. And it uses language that, that shows that, hey, we understand the significance of this. We're doing everything we can to be fiscally responsible. This caught us by surprise. We could really use your support uh, by making this money available to us. So this is a very nicely crafted message. However, 
I'm going to assume that my CFO, he's a busy guy and he's also very direct. He doesn't like flowery language. He likes short messages. And so for his benefit, I am going to ask GPT-4 to make the message more direct and more succinct. So let's see how this message transforms. In this version, GPT-4, you can see it's uh, writing it out, but it ends with just four paragraphs and it gets more to the point. It doesn't have some of that softer language explaining you know, more about the we understand how important this is. But for the CFO, I think that that's okay. He just wants to know what the challenge is uh, and he will probably ask for an additional follow-up conversation and that's his prerogative. But at least we've got the message created to go out. And so that earns us another checkbox. I love the visceral feeling of checking things off. It feels good to know that we are making progress. So four out of nine items done already. Let's take a look at number five. Now, number five is kind of fun. And this is something that I think all project managers should do on a more regular basis, and that is create fun and engaging team events that will help bond the team members together. So there's a scheduled event coming up. I have not yet prepared the theme or the games for it. So we're gonna to turn to GPT-4 and see what it tells us to do. So you can see it gave us the theme of around the world adventure, which I think is fantastic. And the idea is to explore other cultures and it offers multiple games. Uh, any one of these is gonna be uh, time consuming to pull off, but I'm, you know, it will allow you to go through, look at those and pick one or maybe two to do with the team members to uh, have that fun and engaging experience. If you don't like this, you can always ask it to regenerate ideas and it would give a completely different theme as well as different game ideas. It's really versatile that way, but what a great jump start! I don't have to sit and wring my hands about what theme I'm going to create for this party and what games. I've already got some concrete suggestions. It's just as if I went and talked to a colleague about it and got their suggestions. Chat, GPT, GPT-4, Bard, are all like having a project management buddy with you that you can bounce ideas off and get ideas from. It works like a charm that way. So now we get to check off box number five. Let's move on to number six. So item number six assumes that a new VP of engineering has come on board. They are not familiar with the project, but it, this is going to impact their team substantially and you're gonna need their support. So you need to go out and you need to socialize this project with them to get to gain that support. So I've asked ChatGPT, as you can see, to help me create an agenda and talking points for that. Let's see how it did. So from an agenda standpoint, that's a very formal agenda. I would probably soften it and maybe reduce it to four, maybe five uh, at the most. Uh, and make them more talkative. When I sit down with them, I'm not gonna do a slide presentation except when it comes to background about the project. But this is, this is something that is a good start and it gives me ideas of things that I need to remember to discuss with that VP of engineering when I meet with her. So with that, I can check off item number six. Number seven is a standard thing that all project managers should be doing and that's sending out regular project status reports. Just given the information that it has on the project, I'm gonna ask it to generate a project report. Let's take a look. So it has six different sections. It goes through in detail on what we've done, what we're doing, budget, all the important things. It even has an executive summary up at the top. It doesn't have all the information, so it leaves some blanks. Happy to fill those out after. But one of the things that I think is missing is that there's no red, yellow, green status. So I'm gonna ask it to create red, yellow, green status for the project report and regenerate. So it has applied red, yellow, green across each of those uh, items that it is reporting out on. It's interesting that for accomplishments, it gives us a green and we have been working hard, so I think that's fair. For future milestones, it gives us a yellow, but I think that's because it knows that we're struggling with some of the testing. So it actually brought in some of that information prior to say, hey, for testing, we've got a challenge that we need to get over. For issues and risks, it lists two and both are red. Uh, that's, that's good, those are, it's surfaced the two major issues. For budget, it's also red because we know that we have gone over. 
So next steps as yellow, I'm not sure I would even put a, a color on next steps. Next steps are just next steps, um, but that's easy enough to remove. So it's created a status report that with a few edits, I can send out. So item number seven, done. Look, we only have two left to be done with our day. So number eight, this is kind of a personal one. This is a asking your manager for time off email that needs to be sent out. So uh, it's, it's not a hard email to send. You might even be able to, to handle this in an upcoming one-on-one -on -one with your manager, but you keep forgetting to ask them, so you're just gonna send them a note to, to ask for that time off. So let's leverage GPT-4 to actually do that message writing for us. Here it is. Now the message is a little bit formal. We could go back and ask it to be a little less formal because hopefully you've got a good relationship with your manager where you are on a more friendly basis. If not, this would work just fine. Uh, it explains why. It explains the benefits to the company for me taking a break so that I can refresh and recharge. And so it gives a lot of good reasons. I didn't give it any of that or prompt it for any of that. It just came up with that itself. That's that natural language generation that's so powerful in GPT-4. So that's, that is done and off our plate. We can cut and paste, make a few tweaks and send. Eight out of nine items done. Can we get to the ninth? Let's check it out. So for this ninth item, we're assuming that our consulting vendor partner has placed somebody new on the team. And in fact, the we believe that the error that we saw in QA testing, the problems that we saw, could be traced back to this person. They're not engaging with the, way, the team the way that we would expect. Uh, and we've gotten feedback that this is a possible challenge. So I need to send an email to the, our engagement manager, it's the VP over there, asking for their help to either fix this problem with this person or get us a new resource. Let's see how that email looks when GPT-4 creates it. So again, it's keeping that natural language strong. It's laying out the problems. I gave it just some hints as to the problems that I see and it's expanded on them. It's added in a lot of uh, good corporate language in there. So that's a good solid note. However, I'm gonna throw it a twist. We've had problems with this vendor in the past. They're not always very responsive. So I'm not gonna go with a standard polite message. I'm going to ask GPT-4 to create a more stern letter, not, not angry. We've tried in other videos and sometimes these engines won't create angry. So I'm using the word stern to, to get their help and their attention. Let's see what that message looks like. All right, so this is shorter. It is more direct. It's no nonsense and it gives multiple things that I expect to be changed. Now, I didn't even know I expected those to be changed because I didn't tell GPT-4 uh, what needed to be changed. It developed these, but they're good. Listen to this. Assess the new resources, collaboration and communication skills and provide necessary training and support of any identified deficiencies. Conduct a thorough performance review to determine the root cause of the issues and implement corrective, and corrective measures. If the issues persist, promptly replace the current resource with a more suitable consultant. So it's got some actions that we're expecting that vendor to take. I love it. It comes in strong, just a few tweaks and it's ready to go. So number nine, checked off. Look at that, we finished our list for the day. As we were finishing that, I'll bet you our inbox and our Slack and everything else was filling up with new things for us to pay attention to tomorrow. Think about how you can leverage GPT-4 or any of the other engines for your own project management work. It's amazing. It is like, it's like a lever. It allows you to do more with the strength that you have. It's a multiplier. So if your organization is open to it, I strongly recommend starting to find ways to use GPT-4 or the other engines in your project management practice today. Hopefully this video has shown you the way that you can use it throughout your day. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.